Hello and welcome back to the Shiki Science Show. So today I thought I'd take you through how I'm preparing for my PhD. So just a bit of background, I will be starting a PhD in just under a month now and that will be in medical science at Cambridge. And so um, obviously I'm very excited and as I'm big on science psychom, I know that PhDs can be amazing, uh, they can also be quite stressful and the fact that I'm already aware of this is good but since I want to make the most out of my time um, I just want to make sure that I can be as prepared as much as possible really. Uh, <laughs> for some reason the quote from Of Mice of Men is coming to me, the best laid schemes of mice and men often go wrong. Well touch words <laughs> hopefully it won't but who knows um the fact is that shouldn't even matter if things go wrong it's about how you can solve those problems anyway um if i feel prepared i know that's the best i can do in the situation and it's more important but anyway a phd is a learning experience and so i don't expect to know everything before i start and i'm for certain will learn various tips and tricks throughout my time there but in this video, I'm going to go through some different uh, ways that I am preparing myself because they might be helpful for you as well. And so to help go through this, I've split this video into five different sections. So I'll tell you about having the habits, the tools, the knowledge, the mindset and the enthusiasm. So first up, having the habits. So getting, to, getting into good habits is always somewhat beneficial. And with the number of experiments, replicates, conditions, inevitably I'll end up doing. Being able to manage this amount and keep track is of high priority to stay on top of things and to prevent mistakes and then all in all just help me have better faith in what I'm doing. So what habits am I talking about? So firstly, labelling. So some kind of systematic labelling procedure will be really valuable, especially when I can end up with a box full of Eppendorf's. Um, so having some kind of ordering naming system and then backing it up with like an Excel spreadsheet will probably be a really good idea. Um, secondly, I saw that making figures as you go along is a good thing to get into the habit of doing. And in addition to this, making sure that your colour scheme and font is also consistent because at the end they're all formatted in the same way, which is probably a good thing. Um, then folderize. So this is a word that I thought I made up, but actually it turns out it's in the Urban Dictionary. So it's a thing. But effectively what I mean is putting stuff into a folder. It is literally that simple. And I'm not going to lie, it's been a while since I've folderized. Um, I kind of kept everything in piles for the past few years. Um, the problem is I don't really know how best to do this and how best to, what folders to have. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. And the no-brainer is the habit of writing in my lab book with details and details and details um, because, well, that's the only way I can keep track of what I'm doing. And also the habit of using a calendar and filling it out and kind of sticking to it because inevitably there's going to be a lot of things going on and it seems like the best way to keep on top of it. Okay, so now we're on to having the tools. So as a kid, I used to love stationery, having all the, like, the different pens and pads of paper. But um, these days, everything seems to be all phones and tablets and in the cloud. So um, I've watched a couple of videos and there are some apps and apps you, I, seem like good apps to have for a PhD. So one that I recommend or I know I'm going to be using is Mendeley, which is just a reference manager. Keeps all your references in one place. Not that I ever really use it to read the papers, but it's useful for importing them into Word um, when you're writing up the dissertation. A second one is something called Zodo or just any generic PDF highlighting capability app so I can make notes about different papers. Then we have RStudio, which is a way that you can create graphs with your experimental data. Then there is Snapgene, really handy for looking at the sequence of your plasmids and helping you to design primer sequences and doing cloning stuff. Then there's Illustrator. I'm kind of hoping there'll be some sort of license so that I can use it for my PhD, but um, it's good for making figures, basically. 
and figures of high quality as opposed to my little sketches that you see here. And lastly, I've put on here graph pads. I've never actually used it, not gonna lie, um, but apparently it's really useful. So yeah, if there's any other apps that you recommend, honestly, let me know. So next up is having the knowledge. So I guess this is kind of a no-brainer. Reading papers connected to my projects beforehand will probably be a good idea. <laughs> so yeah, of course I've been doing some of this and um, just making sure I'm prepared for when I start. But obviously I don't want to get narrow-minded reading fiction, other non-fiction books and uh, other areas of science are also going to be important. But yes, having some element of knowledge before I start is definitely a good thing to do. Okay, so next on my list is having the mindset. So some of my best ideas have literally come from being in the shower. And so along with having showers, taking breaks, listening to music, I have tried meditating before, it didn't really work out, but I might try it again. It's just a good way to, I don't know, stay de-stressed and just to relax and open up your mind to different ideas and possibilities. And, you know, you gotta stay positive, ask for help if I need it, and always ask for support if I need it as well. And just don't forget the main reason why I'm doing the PhD in the first place. And so lastly, having the enthusiasm. So yeah, I am really excited to start and only time will tell if any of these preparations will help me. But nonetheless, I am still really excited to get going. And yeah, I will probably somewhat keep you posted on how it goes as well. So yeah, I hope some of this was useful. Um, those interested in how I am preparing for my PhD and if you have any other tips be sure to let me know as well. Alright, thanks for listening.